What's up guys, hope you're doing great, Kobe Shots here, and today I have yet another video for you guys. This is the first of its kind on my YouTube channel, and we are going to look at a behind the scenes of how I shoot my B-roll sequences. If you follow me on Instagram, at Kobe Shots, you definitely might have come across a couple of videos of that sort. Today we are going to look at one of them, which is the DJI Ronin S B-roll sequence that I have on my page. I'm going to take you through the angles, the camera movement, the lighting, and everything that you saw over there and how to get a video of that sort. So without much ado, let us head straight to the table and see how we go about a B-roll sequence of this kind. Welcome guys to the setup up close. What we've got going on here are some few light setups, all right? That'll take you through. But first off, I'll talk about the product itself and why I've positioned it on what it's on. It's on just this fabric. It's not totally black. I couldn't find a black fabric or surface for this shoe, but I can use exposure. Very soon you see what I mean. I can use exposure to reduce the look or the influence of the car to make it totally dark or as dark as I can and uh, start with light setup I'll go to my right where I have the ring light being a kicker for the side of the let me increase the exposure you see alright so one thing that you're going to notice on this side is that this light is uh, the ring light is actually hitting the side of the product to ensure that there is much separation from the background to the side. You, you notice that the color is quite close or similar to the tone of the background, right? The background is gray, the product is gray. So to further separate this, we need a second light or another light to influence the side of the product to re remove it from the background. The ring light that's causing that kicker over here is actually a bicolor ring light which essentially means that I can change the temperature of the ring light to warm or cool so that in case I need the warm tones I can switch to that you notice that I have some warm tones over here as against if I was send it to the cool side notice that it's cool Alright, so this is bicolor which helps you to have two temperatures at a time. Alright, so if you are buying a ring light for the purpose of lighting of this sort, this can come in handy than just going for one temperature of a ring light. Alright, so I will switch it back to the cool tones so that you have a look at the setup before. If you would need to change it, you need to change it. Alright, so let us move straight to the second light that I have over here which is a light that's going to throw itself against the background to even further separate the product or the subject matter of this B-roll sequence away from the background so you see this light fall off peeking from behind the product you notice the warm tones is actually coming from that light which ensures that the background is pushed away or separated from the product. For the key light that I'll be using is the Godox SL60W, which is inside a 95 centimeter soft box, which is diffused to ensure that the light that I'll have hitting the surface of the product is as soft as possible and as wrapping as possible. So if I should position myself in this direction, notice that the light is very soft and it becomes even better and shows a three-dimensional look 
to the product if I should stand shooting towards the direction of the light. Alright, so that's the setup that I have over here. So you will start shooting the B-roll sequence in just a bit and I'll turn off the lights to make sure that I have everything from the ground zero so you see me through all the processes to the very end. Alright, so let's cut all lights. So the key light is going to give us a nice wrapping effect around the product. Okay, over here. So what the light is going to do is that it's going to shine from the opposite direction from where I'll be shooting the B-roll sequence so that I can create some wrapping effect in a three-dimensional look to the surface or to the object itself, right? So if you see, you notice that the light fall off creates contrast, it creates some shadows in those gallows over here, creates highlights over here, creates some highlights over here and on top of the product itself. So what you notice is that the light fall off gives it a feel of three-dimensional look so I can appreciate the beauty of all the depth that you see on the product. Alright, so the next light that I'll turn on will be this, which is the kicker. Alright, to create the kicker as I may have said before, to create the kicker on this side for us to appreciate a nice separation of the product from the background. So I'll switch quickly to my G7 so you notice how this kicker influences the product on this side. So you notice that there is a very nice separation if I should stand this way. See the strong lines creating a very nice effect over here to separate it from the background. So you can always have a kicker to influence and to increase the depth you can create in your scene. So what I've done is I've changed the frame rate from 30 frames per second to 60 frames per second because I'll be slowing the video down or slowing the footage down. So 60 frames per second is ideal if your camera is capable of going a bit further and increasing the frame rate you can equally use it but i will be sticking with 60 frames per second for my video all right so we have a very nice fall off as before i'm going to maintain that so that we have a very nice slit of separation from the background okay let me straighten the fabric to ensure that everything looks as smooth as possible This is what I call dressing your set. Every element that needs to be taken care of, make sure you do that before you start filming to reduce your work in post. All right. Okay, so once we have our set dressed, we're gonna reduce the exposure. Make sure that our focus is right and do a smooth push in towards the product. All right, so pushing this way, because I'm shooting handheld for the entirety of this video, I'm gonna make sure that I'll go back and forth, do a couple of them, so that I'll have a lot of options to choose from. So you make sure that you take as many rounds as you can so that you wouldn't have any problem when it comes to picking the footages. So I'll take a few more for safety sake. Okay. All right, now, now that I have the introductory part of the footage, I'm going to shoot from different angles to ensure multiple you know options to choose from all right so what i'm going to do over here is that i'm going to push in once more from this side yes towards the product so you see the kicker doing its job over here so that's it's a very nice highlight 
than you have over here. So they have a three dimensional look for our product down here. So that's the purpose. Okay. So I'm gonna do a push in towards the product from below towards the product like that. Or ascend. Let's go down, shoot this way. And because I'm shooting 60 frames per second and with a wide angle lens, yeah, I forgot to mention this. I'm using a 16 to 35 mm lens from Canon, which is going to give me a very wide look. Because I'm shooting on a micro four thirds, it's going to reduce the focal length, how wide I can go with the focal length. I think it's times two, but because I'm using an adapter, it's going to reduce it a little bit and it'll give me a little more, I mean, width in the focal length. So let's say if I have 16 mm, that's what I'll be shooting throughout, it will give me roughly, let me say, uh, maybe somewhere close to 20. 20 mm for this and it looks quite good, as you can see right now. It looks quite good. It's almost close to how you normally see objects. So it isn't bad at all to have a wide angle for your B-roll sequence. And not to say that you always need just a wide angle. You can equally use, uh, you know, 50, a 50 mm or a lens like an 85 mm, depending on what exactly you are shooting. So you have to keep in mind what you're shooting before you pick your lenses or you make your lens choice. Just as I was about to open the product so it shoots what's inside, I got the idea that why don't I shoot this as well, you know, a pullback of the product down there like this with the light from where it is, just as you may have seen in the video of what I posted on my Instagram page. If you haven't checked it out, you have to check it out before you come so you can really understand why I took some particular angles, why I took some particular shots from what direction and how I let it up. So looking at it will help you understand why I am doing what I'm doing right now. Okay. All right, so I'll quickly switch to camera. Right. So what I'm doing is I'm reducing the exposure so that I can create more separation and focus from the background to the product itself. So all that you see is pitch black or even if you see something you barely see it and your eyes fall on this as the subject matter. Alright, so I'm going to pull back from there. So with the position of the light and shooting against that direction, you realize a lot of contrast really bringing out the relief of the lettering that you see over here. So I'll take a couple more rounds to ensure that I have a lot of options to choose from. Okay. Just like that. All right, so once that's done, let us quickly rotate it this way. All right, so I'll take some shots of me opening it. So I'm gonna increase the height on the tripod. That's how high it can go. And I'm gonna increase the exposure just a little bit. All right. So yeah, I'm sure you see this over here. That's the pole on which my microphone is mounted. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take it out of the scene just a little bit. Maybe I'll just chill it there. Right there. Okay. Can still hear me all right okay so let's quickly open the product i'll zoom in as much as i can and i'll use just my hands to open this 
mind you, you have to be very close as possible in some of the shots to make sure that whatever you are shooting, you're giving us the intricate details in there. So the opening of the lock, you can take a very close shot of it. Then the motion, make sure that you take a couple more. Try a lot of rounds. Because it's acting, you cannot get it right. Sometimes you can't get it right on the first trial, but to be safe, make sure you take a couple more. So what I'm doing is I'll, I have the camera still filming and I'll come in and I'll go out like that. Come in and go out. All right, for those close up shots over there. So once those are done, I'm gonna open the package. All right, you can choose to stop filming and start another round of filming so that you can have separation and know that this footage is for this action and that footage is for that action respectively. All right, so just as I did with the locker, I'm gonna open it all the way like that. I'll do it again for safety reasons. And again, to be even safer. <laughs> all right. So once those are also done, what we're gonna do is we're gonna shoot the product itself inside. Okay. So let us quickly reposition everything that we need to do. Uh, I think the microphone will have to go back to where it's supposed to be. All right. So the microphone will have to be here. Okay. okay, so just as I did for the fabric, I'm going to have to um, clean every surface of dust. What I see over here is a lot of dust, which isn't good for what we are going to be doing. So if you have fabric of any sort, for surfaces like this, you can you know, use some some wet uh, fabric or some dampened uh, fabric to clean the product. Make sure that it's wiped off every single dust that doesn't look good for the shots. So that's one thing about products, photography and products, you know, videography. Everything that you do over here should look clean and as neat as possible. I'm gonna position it just as I have it in my video on Instagram. So it shows you exactly how I did it. Okay. okay so what you're gonna see over here is uh, you're going to see the surface of the product looking shiny and glossy and the wrap is very obvious because of the softening of the light if the light was to be bare without softening you would realize a lot of hard shadows where there are you know depth and um, wherever that you see shadows they're going to be more pronounced but we're gonna have this fall off because of the light quality that we have right now, which is ideal for this, as you can clearly see. All right, so just as we did for the opening, as well as even the very start of the package itself, when we had to shoot it from different angles, we took a couple of rounds to ensure that all the footages that we took, we had options to choose from to be safe. All right, so I'll reduce exposure as much as I can to conserve or preserve a lot of details in the, in the highlights. All right, so I'm gonna pull back like this, push in like that, pull back like this, push in like that. Okay, and 
Also for the details, you can choose to position um, the product in any angle that you want it, especially if it has some writing on it or inscription on it and you want to make them appear, make sure that you position it very well for whoever views the video to see exactly what the product is about. Okay, so I'll have the right hand of the running S positioned up like this, facing the light. And uh, all right, start a new recording. Reduce exposure again, get the focus right. And I'll start filming again. All right, so I'll go this way. Go that way. Come to the left. Now pan to the right. And get even closer by zooming in. You get the flexibility of zooming in when you have the zoom lens, which is also one thing that I need to also talk about. Having a fixed focal length will make you move more than you would, you know, be stationary for your shots. But if you have um, a variable focal length lens like what I have right now, ranging from 16mm to 35mm, I can zoom in and get it as close as possible for this purpose. Alright, so I'll pan to the right again and pan to the left, to the right and to the left, to the right and to the left. I'm sure you see some jittering, some micro jittering, which means that um, because I'm using my hand to do this, I cannot be as perfect as if I would be panning with a gimbal or a tripod but because we're going to slow the footage down I don't need to worry because the slowing down of the footages will ensure that all the micro jittery will be getting rid of all right okay so I'll shoot from a different angle again and take as many shots as possible many shots as possible so to be able to shoot as many as you can you need quite a bigger you know storage medium what i have in here in the camera at the moment is a 64 gigabyte memory card to give me enough space for the footage that i'm shooting because i'm using a g7 uh i'm limited to shooting in 60 frames per second in 1080 gonna shoot in 4k if i were to be using the gh5 i'll be shooting 4k 60 frames per second but what the 1080 is going to help me to do is that it's going to reduce the work and the stress that i'll be putting on my uh, my computer when i'm rendering the video so you can if you're not really shooting the video for a big screen or you know for the purpose of viewing it big you can keep your um, your resolution to 1080 to give you more you know flexibility when you're editing it in premiere pro or any editing software that you'll be using i can also film it from here push it in So what you see me doing is that I'm not moving my arms. I'm leaning forward and leaning backwards to ensure that I'm getting stable shots as possible with my arms not moving and just my body leaning forward and leaning backwards. So I remember I pulled this out, took this out of the package. I gave it a very close look like that. Let me quickly get even closer to the light source. Let's just up one of the two. Yes. Find the focuses. It's good. Alright, so I remember I did this. Hmm. If your exposure is too much can reduce it and then it be like that turn this over open it out like that and it 
close look at the product. And what I'm doing here is that I'm watching myself do whatever I'm doing in front of the camera in the LCD. So it's also good and uh, very useful if you have a swivel screen that you can bring out of the camera than having it fixed back there. Alright, so what I'm doing is I'm going to attach the battery. Use the exposure a little bit more. Okay. So I see the nice light fall on the product surface. Okay. So I'm going to mount or attach the battery to the gimbal. So this action, we're gonna do it over and over again, back and forth. Turn it back and forth. Make sure that I lock it up. Also capture that in video. All right. Good. Good, some more. In the video, I did a speed ramp of me turning the gimbal over after attaching the battery. I did a quick speed ramp to lock up the battery to the gimbal. Okay. I'm gonna change the temperature of the kicker light. Turn it even some more to this side. Alright. So one thing that you notice is that the light is peeling all over the background, which isn't looking very good for us. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to position the light and shoot it or point the light towards the camera a little bit, but still make sure that the light doesn't get into the lens. Otherwise it creates some unwanted lens flares that we are not going to be happy about. All right. So, position it this way to reduce the light fall off against the background and reduce the exposure as well. As the exposure is reduced, we have to bring in the light even close. so that it increases its influence on the gimbal or the product. Okay, so what you see is the gimbal itself with all the lights positioned where it's supposed to be so that you can view and appreciate the beauty and the design. Of the gimbal. Alright, so we're gonna do some camera movement like we did before from the beginning. Like that. Rotate like that. And try to push in like this. Getting more shots like that. And I really appreciate the warm tones the kicker is giving us. It's giving us separation of the light. The key light is giving us cool tones. And the kicker is giving us these nice warm tones for nice separation and dynamism. So I can rotate this way. You notice how smooth I move with just my knees and not move my arms. Keep your arms as stable and as in place as much as you can and use just your knees like that to create that rotation. Alright, 
you do the same rotation camera movement over here on the gimbal then more down the gimbal like that okay climb up this way okay, okay so once we are done with the shots of the parts of the gimbal what we are going to do is we are going to take the outro of the sequence that i have on my instagram page we're going to have this as the kicker and we'll throw light against the background like so All right just like that make sure that we keep it far away as far as we can and still have the light bouncing against the background like that as much as we can okay so just as you see you notice that the kicker is working over here and we have the background also lit up by this and this is doing the kicker for us like that so i'm going to do a push in from here towards the gimbal like so all right what you notice is that i have my uh, key light still positioned where we had it when we started taking the shot of the gimbal itself so we keep it so like that yeah so I'll zoom in just a little bit this way now push in like that okay okay let me start from a little bit away in distance from the gimbal and I'll reduce my footsteps as much as possible to let's say just two so that it will reduce the jittery. But if I can lean forward and reach where I need to reach, I still plant my feet and just push the camera forward and backwards like that. Just like that. And yeah, that's how you take product bureau for yourself so thank you very much for staying through the video please if you haven't subscribed to my channel please and please do that and hit the thumbs up if you like this video though it was lengthy but it was you know packed with a lot of information and if you turn on the post notification button which is having that icon of a uh, bell you're going to be the first to always see videos like this and even better every time i'll be doing this I think I have a couple more B-roll sequences on my Instagram page and if you want to see how I shot it like I did today, please turn on the post notification button once you subscribe to my channel so that you'll be the first to be notified once I upload that video or those videos. On to the next video, thank you very much for staying through. I'll catch you up next time. See ya.